name is Bill Randall, and I'm uh, a gerontology professor at St. Thomas University, and I've been here since 1995, and along with my colleague Gary Kenyon and some others uh, around the world, uh, we've been developing a unique approach to the study of aging that we call loosely narrative gerontology. So I'd like to give you a little bit of a sense of how I got into that approach to the study of aging, and uh, what it means is, I guess, telling you the story of my interest in story, if I could put it that way. So I grew up uh, in the maritime provinces of Canada in a small rural community, Harvey Station to be specific, and I grew up as what's called a PK, a preacher's kid. So I grew up in um, a household where my dad was a consummate storyteller. He could take the most uh, innocuous everyday event and turn it into a, a very interesting, often comical tale. Uh, and by growing up in a rural community, I uh, think I was surrounded by what I would call a very lively uh, narrative environment. Anyway, um, I went uh, off from high school and did some studies here and there, and eventually I went into uh, the study of theology myself and followed in my father's footsteps and became a minister or a preacher uh, with the United Church of Canada, which I was involved in for about 11 years and during that 11 years I listened to a lot of people's stories. I found that that at the time at least was a big part of what I did and sometimes in the listening I like to think that uh, people found some clarification or some uh, uh, affirmation or some healing or whatever and I certainly learned a lot about stories and how they work and what they are and so that led me when I went back to university after those 11 years of ministry to uh, zero in on this idea of the story of my life. In fact, I, I took that familiar expression, the story of my life, or in French, l'histoire de ma vie, and uh, decided to unpack it, as they say, and uh, see what's in that metaphor. So that ended up uh, leading to a uh, dissertation, which uh, became a book and the title of that is The Stories We Are, an essay on self-creation. At the time, I really didn't under, identify myself as a, a gerontologist, although I had begun to teach a course in gerontology for a community college in Toronto. But uh, the opportunity came up to come to St. Thomas University in 1995 for four months as a visiting chair in gerontology, and that's when I began to work closely with Gary Kenyon, who uh, at the time was very interested in something called biographical aging, to distinguish it, say, from biological aging, on um, which there's quite a bit of emphasis in the field of uh, aging studies. But biographical aging looks more, shall we say, at the, the inside of the aging process, how we age and change on the inside in terms of our memories, our emotions, our views on life and ourself and so forth. So I was really intrigued by that biographical aging of, of emphasis, and Gary and I worked on a book together that came out in 1997 called Restorying Our Lives, um, Personal Growth Through Autobiographical Reflection. We did another book together a couple of years after that called Ordinary Wisdom, Biographical Aging and the Journey of Life. So you got to get a sense, you got a sense then of how this interest in the metaphor of life as story and aging as a biographical or an autobiographical or a narrative process really began to take, take root uh, in me. And um, I think probably what, what really helped to bring some of my ideas together was a collaboration with uh, Elizabeth McKim. Beth McKim at the time was a professor of English here at St. Thomas University. And uh, we decided to write a book together where we pulled our uh, collective areas of expertise and interest, hers in uh, uh, literary theory, particularly reading theory, and my interest in biographical aging and autobiographical memory. And the result was a book called Reading Our Lives, The Poetics of Growing Old. And that's a book I still use as kind of a reference point in my own teaching. So I hope that gives you some sort of sense of how I got to have an interest in narrative and story uh, and aging but it's opened up a number of other collaborations and projects that I could say a little bit about if you'd like. Um, probably the most important one that I've been involved with, uh, with a group of folks here at CERN since 2011 is an interest in uh, resilience and later life. And our hypothesis has been that 
Uh, there are many factors that feed resilience in later life, having a good solid socioeconomic uh, circumstance perhaps, uh, physical health is good and so forth, but we thought there's something about the stories that people tell about their lives that may play a part in their degree of resilience or lack thereof. So we've been, in, we've been on a kind of a almost 10 year journey looking into that. The most recent version of that journey is a book project that uh, I'm working on with Brandy and Clive and Matt and Marcy and others on our team, which is called Things That Matter, Resilience, Reminiscence and the Role of Special Objects in the Stories of Our Lives. So we're really zeroing in on how do the things that we have in our lives as we get older, certain pictures perhaps or a pile of letters or uh, an item of clothing or furniture seem to have particular significance for us and are linked in some way to our memories and to our stories. So that's what we've been probing uh, in that book. So that's uh, in a nutshell. And plus, I'm, I've also personally become very interested in aging spirituality and narrative and uh, in the uh, practice of narrative care with older adults, which I think uh, is, a, is a, it's not a rocket science kind of thing. Uh, involves listening closely and respectfully to people's stories as they get older as a means of helping them to do that important identity work that I think later life brings uh, where in a sense we kind of need to pull ourselves together uh, what, what Erickson would call ego integration and uh, having someone listen to our stories as we get them out and think about them and celebrate them I think is an important part of that so that's what that's kind of in a nutshell what narrative care is about. growing interest in uh, narrative approaches to the experience of aging or the process of aging uh, and there's lots of great stuff uh, happening in various corners but overall I would say that within the field or the discipline of gerontology uh, narrative approach is very much on the margins uh, now that may just be my uh, perception but uh, I think the, the mainstream in gerontology is still fairly preoccupied with and perhaps dominated by a, a sort of a biomedical healthcare paradigm of what aging is about. So aging is perceived as ultimately a problem to be solved as opposed to a process to be uh, explored uh, and celebrated. And so a lot of topics like uh, meaning and wisdom and spirituality, which I think are extremely important and from a narrative approach become kind of uh, uh, accessible in a way, um, they tend to be viewed as nice topics, interesting topics, but they don't really make it onto the main agenda, uh, at least in the, in the gerontology conferences that, that I've attended. I'm hoping that that's changed. A narrative gerontology for me is plain. It's hard play. It's, there's a lot of work involved, but it's, for me it's been a playful kind of work. And um, that's how I perceive where narrative uh, tends to fit within the broad spectrum. In my experience of talking about narrative ideas with students of gerontology, who are perhaps in their 20s and so forth, there's something kind of liberating about looking at your own life as a story. It kind of gives you like an, an affectionate detachment from the stuff of your life and enables you to see things you're going through, hard times, disappointments, etc., as part of your story. They're not the whole story. They're just you know chapters or episodes that you will eventually will move beyond and look back and see from a different perspective. Uh, and I've had a number of students say to me that just thinking about their own lives, let alone older adults' lives, in story terms, is a refreshing kind of perspective personally. But students I find realize, hey, I've got a story too. I may only be 20, but I've gone through stuff. I've had different chapters, and there are certain themes and my story has been shaped in certain ways, but I can shape my story as I go forward. I'm not, I don't have to be uh, beholden to the larger stories that have shaped me to, to date. We, are, we, are not, we don't story our lives in a vacuum. Uh, we story our lives in relationship with countless other people, close and not so close, and within context of our families and so forth. And I like to, to explore with students about how uh, our families have unique narrative and environments. So that narrative environment, for better or for worse, that we've had ex been exposed to uh, in growing up in a certain family, does shape us in profound ways.
to say nothing of the narrative environments of the marriages that we become part of or the relationships that we become part of, the communities we live in, the institutions we attend, companies we work for, etc. Cultures that we're part of. Um, and uh, I, I was writing about The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. And that particular scene that you may recall from the very first book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, where little Lucy is kind of pushing her way into the wardrobe and she emerges out the other side into the middle of winter in Narnia. So I was thinking, what, what that, 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 that particular experience or that particular scene sort of struck with me, stuck with me. And I began to think about how, for me, well, there is always that sense of adventure. There's something I'm pushing towards, I'm not quite sure what it is. Often when I read a book for the first time, each new book I read, is it's like, a, like going through a wardrobe. I don't know what's going to be in there for me in that book, what, what insight, what question, or what new way of thinking about or feeling about myself or life is going to be waiting for me. Yeah. So, adventure. <laughs> I think advent, life as adventure is kind of a dominant image that I get from the whole story approach. To think of aging itself as an adventure would seem just ludicrous to, I think, lots of people who see and feel aging as an intrinsic tragedy of getting older and weaker and feebler and more out of touch and uh, you know and then it leads to death. Well yeah, de a decline in death and so forth, that's part of it, but it doesn't have to be the whole story. Um, so that's kind of, that's the cutting edge I think a bit for me these days is to rethink aging for myself as adventure and maybe find a way to articulate that in a way that would be of help to other people.